as we look to punch our ticket to another Kansas City football championship game as this one is up in the air and we are underway here. A good return here with plenty of space cutting up to the far side, getting close to midfield. Ball came loose towards the end. They're going to say that he is down as Kansas City thought they might have stripped that ball loose out of the hands of Kyler Henson. But a good return will set up the woo very nicely as they set up for their first offensive possession. This hasn't really been something that's affected Kansas City's defense, though, all year. They've been very good on, on defending short fields. But, yeah, that was almost massive for Iowa right off the bat with that good return. Almost broke to the house, but decided to make maybe one too many cuts. Yeah, plenty of new faces on this Woo team since we last saw him. We'll get to those in a moment. This is Orville Nelson as he floats this one and completes it in the Goats' territory, making the catch pinned up immediately against the walls, and that's Jamal Couch. Yeah, nicely done there by Couch, and even better by the quarterback there, Vernon Sharp, stepping up in the pocket after what was initially, or sorry, Nelson, after initially fumbling the snap on what looked like a bad exchange, but managing to find Couch on the crossing pattern and putting just the right amount of touch on it so that Couch could use all 6'5 of that frame to go up. Get the first down. Nelson will throw again, this time to the end zone in a mistaken coverage. Touchdown, Woo, and it's number zero, Miles Goulborn. And this is definitely something we saw back in the first meeting between these two, even though it was a couple of different receivers, but the height advantage that Iowa has over these Kansas City defensive backs, this is the matchup where it's the most distinct. This is the tallest receiving core in this entire league, and that's going to be where Iowa is going to want to go with this ball if they try to pull this upset today. They're going to try to take advantage of some of that size. Goats brought two on the pressure on that last play. Got burnt. They do it again here. This one oversailed out of the end zone and incomplete. But, Aaron, I don't think as the last ranked or last seeded, I should say, Iowa Woo to come out on the road against the top ranked Goats. You get the ball to start the game, and just a couple of plays later, you hit pay dirt and you're up top early. Yeah, obviously, that's uh, you can't draw up a start any better than that for Iowa. Get the great return, come out couple of really nice plays through the air right to the end zone it gets you feeling good it makes you start believing that hey maybe it can be why not us things like that that's that's just kind of the sense you need to give your squad early on and now Iowa sits here with a six nothing lead over Kansas City and now it's going to be down to stopping this Kansas City explosive offense you can't come out, have the nice drive, be feeling good about yourself, and then immediately give it right back and, all right, well, now it's a scrap again. I mean, you want to try to ride this momentum early when you're the underdog. Yeah, two sides of that coin. One, going out, getting the score to start the game. Then if you can flip it, if you can get a stop here on defense and get the ball back, a potential chance to double your score, go up two possessions, that would be absolutely crucial here for the Woo if they can make it happen. It looks like we got Justin Olabrice, number eight, ready to throw it down the field. Back to receive for Kansas City. Looks like Anthony Shareless, after being inactive last week, sitting out that regular season finale against the Lunkers. Back ready to receive this one for Kansas City as he takes it almost near the back of the end zone, trying to make a move, and is brought down immediately. Good job. And the coverage team, that's Carson Walters, number 14, that got down there and wrapped him up in the end zone. And they're ruling really, really, out of safety. He took the throw off in his own end zone and tried to stretch it out to the near side, make it up the near sideline, and just could not get away as Walters was all over him. And, I mean, how much better of a start can you have if you're Iowa? And you saw the replay there. Walters isn't there. If you have Shareless able to turn the corner there, he had plenty of green grass in front of him to maybe at least make a move, definitely avoid the safety. But now instead, what? A, you couldn't ask for a worse start if you're a Kansas City fan right now. Seeing your defense give up the opening drive touchdown and now a miscommunication and a, just a mental error on special teams with the safety. All of a sudden, eight nothing woo, and on top of that, the woo were going to get the ball back. Yeah, and that's one of the the big rules of this league is 
maybe wanted to just let that ball hit the ground and take the touchback, decided to chance it, make the return, and This one takes a bounce pin. Thomas collects it for the touchback. They'll bring it out five yards. That's where the Woo will set up shop. But yeah, if you just let it hit in the end zone, you give yourself a touchback. You start at your own five. Not the best field position in the world, but certainly not the worst thing ever. And at least you keep the ball. Decided to try to return that with great coverage downfield by Iowa. And here we are, 8 nothing, and Iowa's got the ball back. I mean, this could not possibly be going any better if Iowa is trying to pull off an upset here for those guys. You got it all in the making right now. And again, it's Arvell Nelson, 6'5", 230 pounds, had a quick cup of coffee at the University of Iowa, also played at Fort Scott Community College. And look at this run to start it off near midfield. Goats trying to strip the ball out. And I'll tell you, for Iowa, that pendulum momentum definitely on their side to open this thing up. Another huge chunk play and a fresh set of downs. Yeah, they have yet to run an offensive play that hasn't gained a first down or scored. Nice run there, by the way, Kyler Henson. First running play of the day we've seen here early on. And so they can do it both ways, through the air, through the ground. Iowa's looking sharp offensively. And Nelson getting his first start at quarterback. No better time than in the... Franchise's first postseason game. We got whistles down the field. We'll stop this play momentarily. It looks like we had a timeout called. And it will go against Iowa. Yeah, I just think maybe they were a little bit confused with the cadence there. Couldn't get their motion off in time. I think the timeout came from the bench just to make sure that they ended up getting the snap off as that play clock was getting awfully low. So the normal traditional quarterback, you've seen the Woo, they've gone through plenty of them this season after starting the season already behind the eight ball, losing them their starter bit due to an injury. They brought in Vincent Espinoza, who was the starter for the majority of the regular season. And then there towards the end, we saw Vernon Sharp, 6'2", 210 pounds, out of Graceland University step in. He did have 435 yards, 11 touchdowns, five interceptions, and just completed about 32% of his pass is just not quite good enough to get the nod here in this postseason game as they're going to continue to stick with Nelson as he fires it down the field. Risky pass, and it is intercepted. Down the field right about the five-yard line. I believe that was Ben Thomas that got there and got it. And it was indeed in a big turnover by this Kansas City defense. And that's definitely something that they have excelled at all year. Ball hawking secondary. They have thrived on takeaways all season long. And this might have been their most desperate need of one that they've had all year. And here we are, drive number three of the game. We're finally getting a look at the Kansas City offense. Interception number nine of the 2024 season for Ben Thomas. High snap in the back of the end zone. Rakeem Cato pushed out. It's recovered. And a touchdown for Iowa. Unbelievable. Well, even when Kansas City makes a play to get themselves back into it, Iowa just cannot stop with the hot start here. Bad snap goes way over Cato's head, and then Derek Wilson, Johnny on the spot, just picks up the loose ball, turns to the ref, and said, hey, look what I found. Man, oh, man, what a start for Iowa right now. This is incredible. What we are seeing right now. So all of a sudden, fourteen nothing woo on top of the go, just like everybody had it drawn up. And they're gonna go for the one point conversion here. Nelson, low man in the backfield. Pressure comes immediately, gets rid of it. Good contact. Up against the wall. That's Goulborn again. They're gonna call him short and the conversion. Not successful. Words continue to be exchanged after the play. Down on the field, it's Dwayne Autry, number 20, a linebacker, also was inactive last week. But again, rough start here for the Goats. You give up that opening drive touchdown to start the game, and then a safety on the throwoff return, and now the first offensive snap of the game goes over the head of Cato into the back of the end zone and recovered for the touchdown. Got to find a way to try to settle in here if you're number one team. 
Yeah, obviously, uh, Kansas City fans have come to expect a certain quality of playoff football in recent years. Don't want to disappoint the home crowd, and Kansas City's in a deep hole already. See if the offense can maybe get that snap down going for. I'm sure they'll figure that one out on the sideline. They haven't really had issues with snaps very often this mm -hmm. year. And already, so we're going to see a new return man back for Kansas City. It'll be Kayvon Smith at Iowa Western Community College. Throw off in the air again from Ola Bryce. And just in front of the goal line, try to stretch out far side, and the Woo are right on top of it. Bringing in the finishing touches on the tackle is Sean McFarland out of Tarleton State University. And now we will see this Kansas City offense try to come out and reboot things a little bit. Get off to a better start, first and ten, deep in their own territory. Yeah, but uh, obviously this is still a little bit better of a start than the uh, last time they were returning a kickoff. That's true. So. Gato Sandy Martinez in motion. They hand it to him. Had a pair of rushing touchdowns last week. Gets by one defender and close to about the 20. And that is where the play will stop. Last on contact number four, Derek Wilson for Iowa. And there's a good one play, one first down already picked up. Yeah, and Martinez does a good job protecting the football as well. As you can see, Iowa's strategy early on is just going for those takeaways as he was being tackled, just smacking at that football, trying to pop it loose. Seen that strategy from both teams defensively early, trying to attack and strip the ball loose. Martinez in motion again. They hand it off to him again, up the gut, this time to the far side, and couldn't quite get away from the first tackler. Rustles him down to the ground, and that is all that play has to offer. Lenroy Naismith, strong physical contact as Martinez maybe just picked up a couple. And they'll call about he got about three, second down upcoming. Interesting that Kansas City, who hasn't really been much of a run-happy team this year, going to it so heavily here early on. Make it three in a row this time. Correll Hill laterals it back, and here we go. Smith, and he gives it off. Lead this is Jamal Williams up the far sideline. Officials deferring touchdown, Kansas City. Nice balance on display there from the big fella. Couple of laterals, and that might be just what the doctor ordered here for the goats. Sluggish start to this thing. As many disasters as you can squeeze into a five-minute period you can think of. But that might be just enough to get the juices going the other way. Maybe just exactly what the doctor ordered. One-point conversion try here for the goats. Cato throws back corner. Not completed. Again, looking for Boo Smith. There is a flag down, so we'll see. As all indications showing Boo Smith that the right part, the right shoulder of his shoulder pad being exposed underneath the jersey. As the pass interference called official against Iowa. So I'll move it up just in front of the goal line, right at the one. Kansas City will get another crack at it. And I think even Boo Smith was upset with himself that even with the pull on the jersey, he thought he should have caught that ball. Cato fakes to Martinez, pumps once, twice, third time a charm, and he finds in the back of the end zone again. It's Jamal Williams. He kept it off with the big rushing touchdown thanks to a couple of paralaterals and now squeezes off the conversion try. And for the meantime, Kansas City halting that Iowa Woo momentum as they look to get back into this thing. Yeah, and what a huge addition to this offense Jamal Williams is already proving to be. A couple of weeks in a row that he's come up with some really key moments, especially down in the red zone using that big frame. Got the touchdown, got the conversion. Yeah, had a big game last week as well. 6'5", 230 pounds at a central Methodist local Kansas City kid. And he is showing up for the hometown team at least for the time being. Woo 14, Goats 8. Angelo Trujillo ready to throw it away again for the Goats. Henson back to return for the Woo. Henson had a pretty good return on the last one. This time, good coverage by the Goats getting down there in a hurry and halting him up right around the 10-yard line. No flag 
on the play. So we'll resume first and 10 for the Woo at their own 10. Yeah, I think it was just a player slow getting up there, Breon Murray. And trying to see if he's trying to shake it off. And yeah, he'll he'll stay out there and play some defense. Just was a little slow getting up, but he says he's good to go. Well, now we're going to have another timeout burnt here by Iowa. Seven minutes, 19 seconds still here in the first quarter. And already burning two timeouts. And we'll see if that... We'll come back to haunt him a little bit later on in this game. You mentioned Breon Murray, who was a little slow to get up there again. He's going to be staying in the game. A late season addition for Kansas City out of Coffeyville. Also had some time at Virginia Tech in the ACC as a Hokie. Uh, going into last week's game, 16 tackles and two interceptions in four games that he had with the Goats. He added on two more interceptions last week, including a pick six against the Lunkers, as he has just helped reinforce as what many might argue to be the best secondary in the league here in Kansas City. So you got Murray in there, obviously Ryan Martinez, Angelo Trujillo leads the league in total interceptions and total pick sixes as well. As Kansas City continues to show why even in a league that is tailored around high explosive offense that why it might be defense that still wins championships. This one coming to the near side and right up against the wall and stopped immediately again to Henson, getting him involved early in this game are the Woo on offense. And that was the first offensive play that didn't result in a first down one way or the other or a touchdown for Iowa. A little five yard out there, but they have been cruising apart from the interception that they threw earlier. It's in motion again. Nelson takes and throws back across his body and incomplete. Looking back the other way to Carson Walters. And that's a big drop. If he was able to bring it in, might have a chance to pick up the first down. Instead, he'll bring up third and five. That was a well-designed screenplay right there. I like what they're trying to do, and it, it really should have worked. He had the blockers out in front of him. They had the offensive line release as a whole, and then a screen to the player that's the de facto right guard, right tackle, I guess in Walters, but just unable to connect on the pass, and that's a shame. There was some green grass ahead of him. Give Henson another head start. One rusher coming for the Goats. This time, Walters able to squeeze it with both hands, makes a move, picks up the first down near midfield. It took the defense for a ride a little bit there. Getting that first down and just dragging Kayvon Smith. <laughs> Shoved him forward for a few additional yards. Might be a tone setter type of a play right there. Offenses love to feed on that when they take the physicality to the defense. Now under five on the play clock, getting it away. Whistle's blowing again. Now they have a penalty flag and definitely looked like some early movement there. This is going to be a false start on the Woo. That'll back him up five yards. Yeah, I think Jamal Couch was just a little bit anxious to get his route going down the field. It obviously looked like he was running something deep. He, he was smelling touchdown on whatever that play call was and took off a little bit early. So that'll back him up, and we'll see what they've got for first and just a little bit longer. And we know usually when they give those receivers the running head start, there usually is a little bit of like a grace yardage, I think is what you've explained to us. But I think that one definitely crossed it there. That's why the flag came out. You would need quite a bit of grace on that one. Yes. <laughs> To Ola Bryce, back to Nelson over the middle to McFarland, back to the original line of scrimmage. Big body taking a lot of goats down with him. Now another flag comes in the air. I think they're going to get Autry for what they're going to rule a late hit. I Whistle hadn't blown right. yet, but I think they decided that because he was being held up that to come in leading with your helmet at that point. I think that's what they're going to get here. Yeah, well, Autry was, I think he was one of the ones actually holding him up there for a minute. Somebody for Kansas. I don't know if we can get in our look at that. Try to. So I do apologize identify. to Autry there. It was one of his teammates. He was framed <laughs> by, by me, but ignore that part. Yeah, is it? Yeah. 
Number five sets. Kayvon Smith. He's tagged with it. No, number nine. It's that is Marcus Zawifel. He gets called for it. He has a wifel just a little bit tardy to the party on that one, and the officials will penalize him accordingly. Looking to pass, Henson, wounded duck, goes out of bounds, incomplete, ricocheting off the Goats' home bench. The bench with some bad hands there. Came right back all the way to the sideline. Still ends up back with a fan, though, but yeah, just nowhere to go with that football, and they already have been picked off once today, so I think it was smart to just give up on that play, throw it away, don't try to force anything. You try to force something against this defense in particular, and you usually start watching someone run the other way. Already seen one example of that early in this game. Looks like it's going to be a direct snap again to Ola Bryce, who might go Nelson. No, they just go over the head of Ola Bryce. Back corner of the end zone and wide open again for an Iowa Woo touchdown. That is Daniel Crowell, number 16. They would have bring that one down and another touchdown pass on the day for Avell Nelson. Iowa continues with the hot start, going back to a two-possession lead now. They've struggled on these conversions, but thankfully they have a safety somewhere in the middle there that helped pad out a couple of points. But we'll see if they're able to finally get one of these conversions down. But, man, this Iowa offense is looking sharp. Pressure from the Goats again. And able to put it in for the conversion is Walters. And I'll tell you what, I think there might have been a lot of fuel to the fire during this week of preparation for the Woo. Maybe seeing a lot of the a lot of the word going around here in Kansas City as everyone's making the preparations for the championship game to be taking place at uh, Ivy Arena, old Kemper Arena for in uh, Kansas City. Maybe thinking, well, everyone's just writing us off, so there's only one thing that we can do is go in and pull off the upset and potentially win the whole thing. There's one thing is for sure, if they're able to hold on to this 21-7 lead right now and pull off this victory, they'll be back on the road next week. It's just a matter of will it be up in Duluth or will it be back here in the Show Me State down in Springfield against the Lunkers. This is the exact start that you'd wanted here for the Woo especially taking advantage off a couple of mistakes from Kansas City. Boo Smith back to return this one, maybe looking for a jolt of energy, and he gets cut down after a pretty short return. Goats will take over inside their own 10-yard line once again. Rakeem Cato back out there wearing the double gold gloves. He did not play last week against the Lunkers. It was all Josh Hollins. As Cato comes in just behind the leaderboard and Passing yards did lead the league in touchdown passes with 32, even after missing a few games throughout the season. Yeah, but he, he does benefit from being a part of the highest scoring offense by a wide margin. So true. he was he was able to give up a bit of a handicap there. I do think it's interesting that obviously Boo Smith started the year as Kansas City's primary throw off returner. Uh, clearly, after giving Hill a couple of chances earlier today, getting the safety, getting some bad field position, they, they went back to Boo Smith there, who they liked giving him that rest so he could focus on some offense. Clearly, even Kansas City starting to feel the effects of this onslaught early from Iowa, thinking that they might need a little bit of a spark somewhere else. Officials getting the ball spotted now. Ten seconds on the play clock. And here we go. It's another run from the pass-heavy Kansas City Goats offense as they're trying to go with the ground attack right now. Dijon Warren, number 21, wrapping him up immediately as that was another handoff to Hill in the backfield. Yeah, obviously the first run of the game to Martinez worked splendidly, so I, I don't blame him for trying to go back to it, but hasn't really been as effective since. Cato near side, fan almost being able to catch that one. Martinez snags it. Or it ended up in his lap. Not as appreciated when you're able to snag one of the passes from the players when the player intended is from your own home team. <laughs> so the fan uh, 
I think rightfully so backed away at the last second there, but yeah, no fan interference on that one. It's all good. See what they have drawn up here for third. Quick pass, and again they go to Martinez near the near side board, and they're going to say incomplete. See, it looked like he was bobbling it for a moment. We're going to say that he just flat out dropped it. Clock continues to run under a minute to go in this opening quarter, and now a call it about fourth and three up here now for Kansas City. Yeah, need to just secure that one. Worry about the first down, not what you're going to do after the catch. And another one over Cato's head. It looked like maybe the womb might have gotten a head start across the line. Yeah, this one should be an offside easy call. Yeah, rule to safety right now, but penalty flag is down. It's going to give a fresh set of downs for the Goats. So after the dropped pass, a play before Iowa gives them a free pass here. And definitely that's Derek Wilson, who also would have gotten credit for the safety on that play. Just came across the line a little bit too eagerly. And a big saver there for the Goats, because if that play would have stood up, man, you give up another safety and you give the ball right back to Iowa. Already up 21-7. Might be looking in trouble. This is Hollins now. Able to get it off Correll Hill. Lateral it back. Williams. Took it to the house earlier. Continuing to run. Gets his helmet ripped off. There's now a flag. flag comes in. I was wondering. I mean, that wasn't just a face mask. He grabbed under the mask and pulled the helmet off. That is one of the most intense. Yeah, Jamal Williams down afterwards. He's going to get some help from his teammates. But that has to be one of the most aggressive face masks I've ever laid eyes upon. I know Jamal Williams is a big guy. He's hard to tackle, but he can't go full felony with it. Williams will head out for the meanwhile, get a little bit of a breather. And there's almost a well, way you almost feel like you got to like double up on the face mask penalty just for ripping off the whole helmet. Well, I think I think maybe they normally would. But there is a certain understanding where they, they were like, well, I guess it, it is Jamal Williams. He's impossible to tackle, so I, I get it. So another defensive penalty here on the Woo. Sets the Goats up nicely in Iowa territory. Goal to go. Hollins with the give. And it is caught up there near the wall and near the goal line. Goats inching just a little bit closer, trying to make this back to a one-possession game. Yeah, this is a huge drive here. They need to come away with points the way this drive has started. First quarter already nearly at an end. Give it to Hill. Oh, what a play. It says Hollins, the quarterback. He's going to be held up just short. I'll tell you what, Hill was stopped in his tracks. Double leg takedown right up the middle of the field and the wear of all to pitch it back to Hollins. wonder if he has a wrestling background. <laughs> To keep the composure in the, in the midst of all that is just incredible. Yeah, the pitch was spectacular, all things considered. Another fake from Holland. Gives it to Hill. That's a Kansas City go touchdown. Definitely desperately needed at that stage of this game with the first quarter winding down to an end. Able to make sure they came away with points. Iowa has a very stout defense for a team that maybe doesn't have the best win-loss record imaginable. That is the one thing that they have always had all season long is their ability to play physical and play some stout defense. So hats off to Kansas City. Able to get this thing back, as you mentioned, to a one-possession game heading into quarter number two. And right as the first quarter comes to an end as well. Goats King playing it safe, going for the one-point conversion. Hollins in the backfield, pitches it back. Martinez runs up front, got one man to beat, pulls him over, and in for the conversion. Unbelievable. Peak physicality from Ryan Martinez. Yeah, I hope Chris Herring got a license plate number. He might have a winnable lawsuit on his hands for... That truck that just ran him clean over at the goal line, Ryan Martinez. Wu get ready to have the ball back. Henson settling under it. Just a couple yards in front of the goal line. Another nice return setting uh -oh. up here. Past midfield, up the near sideline, shouldered. 
into the wall after crossing the Goats' 15-yard line. And it's when you can make plays like that as a Cinderella that really boosts your odds of maybe trying to hold on and pull off this upset. Yeah, obviously you just gave up a touchdown. Kansas City feels like, all right, you know, we're calming down. Let's ease back into it. We're getting back into this game. We're the better team. And, oh, I didn't even see this flag way back here. Oh, yes. So scratch everything I was about to say about Iowa managing to stem off a little bit of the momentum that Kansas City was dragging back to their side. Well, it's a perfect example because we were getting ready to go down the road of the big separator in this game right now is to play a special teams really well for the Woo, fairly poorly for Kansas City. However, that penalty bringing them back, so now we can look at the penalty margin right now. Just one in the game right now for Kansas City, five already for the Woo. And trying to hold on and build on this seven-point lead. That is something you definitely have to get under control right now. There's another big play wiped off the board on the big return for Kyler Henson. They'll just set him up first and ten at their own five-yard line. Early snap. Goats try to get it. It's still loose in the back of the end zone. Goats are on top of it. And what a turn of events. Absolutely wild, as I believe that's Murray in the back of the end zone. It is Brian Murray. Recovering that thing, and now we're an extra point away from being tied. So the excellent start from Iowa, and now Kansas City has found a way to get a couple of breaks go their way. We're back to a tie ball game if they can punch this one in. But even if they don't, I mean, to be back to one score, what a wild start to this postseason. Yeah, this, this has been... This has been something. <laughs> Quite the game. Hollins can't run it. has got to get rid of it. And he does, and he finds the open man in Boo Smith. As he lets Chris Herring hear about it. Herring from Fort Atlantic University. And dangerously close wow. to being over the line there, but the referees rule that he just had a foot back behind what looks to be the 30 is actually the five in today's game on this field. Gets the conversion, and here we are. Just as we all predicted, it would be 21-21 at 13-26 to go. That's exactly, and even if you would have told me that this game would be tied at 21 apiece, I think a lot of people would be shocked, but even if you would have told them that this was going to be the score at the 13-minute, 26-second mark of the second quarter of how do you think we got to this point? Not a single person would have ever guessed all the crazy string of events that have happened in this game to get us to this 21 all mark. Well, for those of you that came out here today, the fans in attendance, certainly getting your money's worth. What an exciting, wild game we've got here early on. And now I was going to get another chance with the ball. Hey, Kansas City's climbed back into it. It's a tie game again. Let's see how Iowa can respond. Henson will just let this one bounce and the touchback recorded first and 10 from the five upcoming. It's been this far east end zone so far in this game area. It's just, it, maybe it's a little bit cursed. I don't know. This is where all the chaos has been happening down at this end of the field so far. Some sort of magnet for the football on that far wall, I think. Couple of bad snaps in the safety, as you mentioned. Vernon looking for options and flicks it. Improvise. Good spin move. Get up the field and pick up the first down. And again, it's Carson Walters. The fact he ate, he was able to get a first down on that play just kind of goes to show you what kind of what kind of a game we're dealing with here today, Dylan. I mean, it looked like a broken play from the start, and Vernon just able to flick it. I think it was supposed to be a running play, and they they got all discombobulated in the backfield and had to do what they could, turned into eleven yards somehow. Vernon looking to pass, hit as he throws, <laughs> incomplete. And Thomas on the coverage and the hit, hooking him up and getting going to Daniel Crowell. He's got a receiving touchdown in this game. Because there was heavy pressure coming from the Goats, forcing that throw from Vernon. Yeah, Albrice had pressure in his face almost as soon as he got a handle on that snap. Forced a high throw and flat. I mean, even if he caught it, it's a gain of maybe one. 
Well defended there by Kansas City. Once again, it looks like that was Couch. Couldn't get the snap off before he was about three yards downfield. Yep, and it's another false start on the woo. Back him up even further. It's still second down. You mentioned it earlier, too, the penalty issues here for Iowa. I mean, the fact that they are the team coming into this at 1-7 and seven and are easily being dominated in the penalty margins right now, and we're still tied, is nigh on miracle work for Iowa to this point. 6-1 to one in the turnover margin, or in the penalty margin, I should say, between Iowa and Kansas City. Ola Bryce in space, good open field tackle by Ben Thomas and a herd of goats. Come in and finish off the play. Angelo Trujillo in there as well as Kayvon Smith. A good job breaking down one of the standout defensive players in the league, Ben Thomas. And he's having himself a legacy game thus far here in the first half. Every defensive play that's there to be made for Kansas City seems to be being made by number 10. Goolborn in motion. Vernon lets it fly open and caught through contact brought down. Want to catch down the field, and again, it's Jamal Couch using that big frame to reel it in. 6'5", 240 out of Mississippi State. Big chunk play has the Woo set up in Goat's territory. Vernon avoids the rush from Robbins. Gets it away. End zone contested. Holds on to it. Touchdown, Iowa. Back to Crowell again. Well, there you have it. Iowa backed up at their own five to start this drive. I asked the question at the beginning. We're going to learn a lot about this team right here, how they handle the adversity of giving away their big lead. Now it's back to even. Let's see how they respond offensively. Well, they come right out, go right down the field. Business as usual thus far today. Another touchdown for the Woo. And tight coverage from Angelo Trujillo as well. So even a perfect throw and a great catch to complete the sequence. Double pass. And it is caught. Jamal Couch had the big catch to set up the touchdown throw to Daniel Crowell, and now he reels in the conversion after. And tied no more. Back with the lead are the Woo, 28-21. Nine minutes, 25 seconds left here in the first half. Yeah, nicely done there. Heads up aware play after catching the ball in the flats to remember the rules of this league. Second forward pass allowed. Throws it downfield, a little bit of a bobble there by Jamal Couch too, but able to finally corral it before the defense was able to get over to him. Another throw off looming here for Iowa, another chance for this Kansas City offense, and again, they're sending out Boo Smith to try to return this one. If he can break a big play here, give a jolt of energy back into this home crowd. We've seen their home team battle back after being down two scores early. Now just back down by seven, right near the goal line. Dangerous territory. And he'll be tripped up again. That's, that's McFarland getting down there and Smith not getting any further than the six yard line. And Moving around a little gingerly there. It appears to be okay. He yeah, did it. I think that limp is a little bit more important right now for Kansas City than any field position issues. Well, he did in the game last week against the Lunkers. This was a little bit later in the game where it was already pretty well decided and they kept the starting offense out there. And Smith did kind of have a play where he might have tweaked his left ankle. Got to talk to him briefly after the game and he said that he was okay and wasn't going to be missing this game. Obviously, he's still out there. As Hollins has this one deflected, and it goes incomplete. Yeah, that is all eyes right now 
Stefan. Number one out there still walking around noticeably with a limp, like you mentioned, Aaron. And this is the guy that the offense primarily revolves around. If you're if you're the offensive coordinator, Tyrone Groves, and head coach Dorsey Golston. Another pass play here over the middle. There they give it to Boo, tries to make a move. And is brought down a pretty good gain on second, however. And you know Iowa is looking out for him considering the game he had in Kansas City the last time we covered these two teams. And it wasn't even his offensive <laughs> presence Not in that game. No. He did he did have one receiving touchdown, but he also had three pick sixes on defense. Another good tackle brought in by Warren. As Kansas City continues to try to get the running game going, it'll be another fourth and I mean fourth down play about two, three yards to go. Hollins gets rid of it, and at the line of scrimmage, tries to trust the ball out. He did not get there. Not even close. And that's head coach Mook Zimmerman for the woo out there celebrating with his team and a huge stop. And the Goats come up short. Hearing some fans voicing their displeasure out there, one screaming, get it together. And this has just been a head-scratching performance so far from the number one team in the league right now, the Kansas City Goats. You can't even chalk it up to rust either. Obviously, no first-round bye for the one seed here. No week off last week. Played all their starters. Yeah. This is just wild. With the exception of Rekeem Cato, and it should be noted that he has been taken out of the game. It's Ben Hollins back at quarterback for Kansas City. And Cato still on the sideline. He has a hood up. He has his gloves off, so we'll see. He pops back into this game a little bit later on. Meanwhile, chance for the Woo to build on a seven-point lead. Vernon, he can run with it, has space, lowers the shoulder, and whistles will blow. That big body got full head of steam running down the field. And not to pick it up, goal to go here inside the five for Iowa. A gain of maybe a yard there. I have to imagine defenders out there just thankful for the wall's proximity at that mm -hmm. point. He is a big fella coming down he downhill at you. Hola Bryce to Vernon, and he'll just take it himself. A light jog. Contact coming in fairly late there. Now we're going to probably see some flags coming in here. Definitely will. Right now, a rushing touchdown again for Norvell Nelson. We'll wait to see as they try to sort out all the dirty laundry on the field. And that's Dwayne Autry that definitely some shoving, I'm sure. Nice conversation held between everybody. Officials getting together, talking it out. Oh yeah, I'm sure they were they were just asking each other where they're going for dinner yep. after this and how's the family. Yep. Weather's great, huh? Yeah. Out comes the flag, and, man, Iowa able to turn that fourth down stop into a touchdown. This is uh, this is not an issue that's going away for Kansas City. No. They're not, they got back to 21-21. Maybe there was a sense, especially among these KC fans, all right, finally, we're back, okay. Nope, here comes Iowa right back, jumping out to another multiple possession lead. And I believe after after all of that, so they gave the flag to to somebody on the woo. So touchdown stands. So he just confirmed. At 34 21 to score, and the Woo are going for the two point conversion as the ball is spotted all the way back in midfield. We've seen one of these earlier on in the year as well. Uh, last week, actually, the offense with a personal foul after a touchdown and had to go for two from way back here. Nelson gets a big block, able to heave it, 
Has a man 50-50 ball. It goes incomplete. Preon Murray in coverage on Kyler Henson. I'll tell you, that ball had a good chance as Nelson had the space and time to throw it in that back far corner. Yeah, if you're Henson, though, you can't you can't wait back on your heels like that on a flutter ball. You need to be working your way back up the field. Try to get in a better position to go up, be the front man for the jump ball. I think his quarterback would have liked a little bit more assistance from his receiver when you're throwing one up like that, but... Obviously, that problem is going to arise when you're trying to go for your conversion from the 25-yard line. Well, now we're getting ready to see this Kansas City offense back out on the field, barring any misfires happening on the throw-off return, which we have seen already with the safety given up early in the game that put up the woo 8-0. This is an offense that got... They'll turn over on downs, and that already gave the Woo great starting field position on that last touchdown drive to put them up 34-21. You hate to start to get into when you're already, especially in the first half, still a little over nine minutes to play until we hit the locker room for halftime to say, like, these are this is like a must-have, like a, a must-have possession. Like, you've got to get something out of this. I almost feel like you got to kind of say that about this, the way that this – Woo team has been offensively as Boo Smith able to bring that in. Right? I mean, he was right. He had to at battle the edge of the to goal get it to line. the one. I mean, and they take over, I mean, just in the shadow of their own end zone. I mean, you cannot afford at this point to even bobble that snap and be one step out of sync. You got to make sure that you are perfect offensively here if you're Kansas City. And a drive where you feel like you got to get down the field, get some points. Now they adjust the clocks. So we're running a little over four and a half minutes until halftime. Holland sends Martinez in motion, throws it quick, and hit immediately. Lamar Wilkes of Anna Maria College. And again, that's Boo Smith. And again, a little bit slow to get up. They're, they're ruling that incomplete as well. Hit Georgia loose at the end. And this gives you a chance for the Wu defense. You can be a little bit aggressive here. Nice one-handed snag brought in by Hill. Able to hold on to it. That'll give the Goats a little bit of breathing room. So he brings it out. They're going to spot him right at about the five or six-yard line. Still two more downs to get about five yards. Holland gets rid of it to Boo near side at the 10, shoved into the wall, and that's going to be enough for the fresh set of downs as the physicality continues here. From this Iowa Woo defense, that's something that's definitely has jumped out to me early in this game. Yeah, and Boo Smith definitely feeling it more than anybody. Having to absolutely earn each and every yard he has gotten here today, playing through that injury. See him down at the bottom of your screen. Hill in motion. They fake to give to him. Give it to the big body, Jamal Williams. Trying to battle his way to midfield. Wrapped up. First one there, DJ Lewis, former Alabama Crimson Tide. And still enough for the fresh set of downs. Yeah, Williams has arguably been the best offensive player here for Kansas City in this game. Every time they've desperately needed something, they usually try to go to 88. This time they go to 87. This is Brian Cox. Stretches it out. Penalty flag comes in late. So for the time being, it's about a gain of four on the play for Brian Cox. But we'll see what the penalty flag I think, is on the field. I think Cox was the center on that play, and he was not even close to five yards downfield when they threw him that ball. This might be illegal touching. And you would be correct on that, partner. So that stretch feels awfully unnecessary now <laughs> at the end of that play. Kansas City continues to just not be able to get out of their own way. A 
And get the ball spotted. Right. Brian Cox again will snap it back to Holland. Martinez, the man in the backfield with him. He'll be sent in motion. Snap to Holland. Steps up. Avoids the pressure. Waiting. Now fires. And did he catch it? And that's the question. Incomplete. That's Brian Cox again trying to plead his case. The official comes in. It looks like they're going to have a conversation about it. It's hard to tell with the near side wall being in the way and the spectators. It looked like it was definitely a low throw from Hollins. If this was going to be incomplete. It's still going to bring up a long third down. They're currently looking up at that scoreboard right now, down 13 points. I think they're gonna take a they're gonna take a timeout here, and I think they're gonna look at this a little bit more. So it'll be interesting. See, we got various cameras scattered out down there. I wonder one of them might have gotten the Best look at it again up against that near side wall. And this would be a huge pending completion right now as it would at least bring up a nice third down and manageable with still third and fourth down to give on this possession. The Goats, it is important to note that they will receive the throw off to start in the second half after the Woo started with the ball in the first half. So a potential chance to try to score a touchdown here or maybe potentially double dip and try to get yourselves back into this ball game. As I would believe where this game is right now, 34-21. It's the largest deficit the Goats have had facing this Iowa Woo team all season. Again, they've met three times in the regular season. The Goats winning all three of those games, 82 points per game on average in those meetings. They met all the way back June 8th. That was the first one up in Waterloo. The Goats win 91-56, and then the closest game, between these two was in Kansas City just seven days after that, 58 to 38, when they met once more back in July 20th, where the Goats were a point shy of 100, 99 to 60. And absolutely wild here. I mean, Kansas City might have to use a surrender option here as they, they've actually called an illegal forward pass. They said Hollins was across the line fully. And so, yeah, that's what Kansas City's going to do. They're going to just surrender this ball rather than go for it on 4th and 25. And Iowa makes another defensive stop. Now, Coach Golston getting out there trying to plead his Casey official. He's got to be careful to not get himself tossed out of this game early. Second time that this Wu defense has gotten a stop on this Kansas City offense. And now a chance here for the Woo. If you can find a way to manage this remaining 57 seconds and go down the field and score another touchdown. One minute. One minute, 57 seconds. Excuse me, that upright is placed perfectly. It is perfectly there to block whatever that so, first number is. So even better news for the Woo. One minute, 57 seconds. Now, granted, in the Arena League, I mean, that might be good news for the Goats. Enough time to make a stop and get the ball back. Could very well be. Things move quickly here in the Arena League. Referee's still discussing something. I'll give a little bit extra time for the Woo to try to huddle up and get a play call. And I didn't see a signal as if somebody were to use a timeout. I do believe now with it being a minute 57, this could be the two-minute warning that we're currently in. I had to wager. Just looking around, still a good crowd on hand here tonight, but definitely a lot of, a lot of surprised faces in the crowd this evening. Not a very many people have been following the Arena League for its whole entire inaugural season. We're expecting this in the first round of the postseason. Number four it had to be the Road Warriors if they want to bring the Arena Mania Cup back home to Waterloo. Have number one seed Kansas City on their heels right now. A minute 57 until halftime and another chance 
for this offense to put up points for Iowa. As Nelson will fire this one at the feet and incomplete of Kyler Henson. Excuse me, it's Daniel Crowell again. He tried to attack it too. Second down upcoming. Yeah, and never before has Kansas City this year desperately needed their defense to rise to any occasion quite as badly as they need a defensive stop right here and now. You go down three possessions heading into that halftime locker room. I mean, it is officially sound the panic alarm point at that, at that time. Well, that's not even close. Yeah, that was Crowell trying to race down the field and get a head start trying to get behind Kayvon Smith. He was trying to get behind Kayvon Smith before the snap. <laughs> it's incredible. Seventh penalty of the game on Iowa. Only two so far for Kansas City, and yet the Woo currently up by 13 points. Don't see that all too often, especially here in the Arena League. Well, Ford coming in. Did the goats decline this penalty? I don't really see a benefit I, to that. So, well, that I thought maybe on the far side official when he came down the line, he was indicating that maybe that's what they were saying. But no, nope, definitely accepted. Second and fifteen after the false start. Oh, they fake the pitch back, oh. throw it up to Couch. Nice play design. Angelo Trujillo first to wrap him up. And that was well done as the Goats were bringing pressure. Full head of steam going back to Nelson. Instead, Old Bryce just held on to it, able to pitch it to Jamal Couch. That'll bring up more closer to about a third and seven. Kyler Henson just running straight up the field. The Goats didn't have a safety back. So he was just standing over there with that deep official wide open. Another one, big drop. Incomplete, Nelson trying to get rid of it. And had his man in a huge drop there on third down. Now we'll see how aggressive this Iowa team wants to get here. Fourth down and seven in their own territory. About the 18-yard line. And all indication says they're going to go for it. Now this Kansas City crowd starting to get loud, trying to get behind our defense. Trying to scramble. Stiff arm. Spin. Dives for it. Ball is out. Angelo Trujillo has it for the moment. And a first down picked up on the scramble. This is an incredible first half we're seeing from Iowa. I mean, he, he easily got that first down. I'm not even totally sure what the conversation was about. Nearly a fight near side as well, but thankfully that calmed down pretty quickly. What a scramble on a big fourth and seven. Vernon now pitches it incomplete. Looking for McFarlane, it was just out of his reach. Little center release there after the snap. Pressure fairly quickly onto the quarterback there, Nelson. Just rolled to his left. Put a little bit too much air under that ball. Going for the corner route. Here we go, second down and 10. Even it down the field, it's left short. Thomas deflected it, it falls down to the turf, incomplete. 10, Ben Thomas down covering against 10, Kyler Henson. And I thought Thomas tried to get in front of that one, maybe thought he might have had a chance for interception number two in the game. Yeah, I think Henson almost caught it off the tip as well. He went down low, it ended up hitting the ground, but Got to like that he followed followed after the tip and almost made one of the circus catches of the year. Third down and 10, flicks it, can't bring it in as Olibrice. 
Pressure again from that Kansas City defense. Kayvon Smith, among others. And again, that'll bring up fourth and ten. So this is going to be huge for Kansas City. Can't afford another possible stop to slip through their fingers here on fourth down. Still 46 seconds left to play as well. You get a stop here. You give your offense a little bit of a chance. But if Iowa can convert this one, they are going to be in the driver's seat. 46.8 seconds in the second quarter. Flags will fly again. Iowa's had an issue with that all day. Penalty number eight in this first half alone. So fourth and 10 will now go to fourth and 15. Back in your own territory at the 20. As Mamie does that option, looking at the short clock up on the scoreboard, does that entice you to maybe try to surrender this one? If you're Iowa, all indications look like right now they're still going to line up and go for it. Granted, even if you surrender it, you're only gaining 15 yards of field position at this point. It's, it's a rules that aren't necessarily designed to entice you to use that option. Want as much offense as you can possibly get. Fourth and 15 off the penalty. Nelson takes a shot to the end zone looking for Henson over the wall and incomplete. Looks like we had a goat spill over the wall as well. Yeah, that was Thomas, and he's hurt. It's a hand up. Definitely a little bit shaken up. Maybe I believe that's Trujillo down there. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Not Thomas, but Trujillo. That 10 and 16 can be a little bit. A challenge, believe me. He's jogging over, getting high fives. Everybody appears to be okay. That would have been a huge loss for Kansas City if he were seriously injured. Thankfully, he's okay and gets a nice ovation from this home crowd. Now, this is the chance here for Kansas City. 38.2 seconds of halftime in Iowa territory. First and 10, just shy of the 20. Hollins again deflected by Warren. Got a fingertip on that ball. And Boo Smith was furious. He thought he had a lot of space to run if they could have gotten that play off, but nicely defended once again by Iowa. That's the pride of their team, that defense. And another one deflected back to Hollins. Ball is loose. It's scooped up. Letting this one play out. Now they'll discuss it, I'm sure. We'll see. Ricocheted back to Hollins. Looked like knee was down. Surely looks like he was down. I think he was trying to get off a forward pass so that he wouldn't lose all that yardage. I don't really know why he caught the... I mean, I guess just gut instinct gets deflected right back into your face. It's always easier said than done when you're in the heat of the moment. And if you can't say right now, you'll definitely will just take the loss on the play rather than loss of possession. And loss of points. Loss of points, yep. Again, we got our sky judge looking at it up here in the press box right now. Again, it looked like, based off the initial replay that we saw, it looked like Holland's knee was definitely down on the turf. Like you had mentioned there, trying to get some kind of forward pass off so he can avoid the loss. But, again, knee was down, so we'll just have to accept it. Clock stopped right now, 24.6 seconds. I'm sure they'll be adding some more on. I didn't see where exactly that time was at the time his knee was down on the turf. Still taking time, still trying to sort it through. Indication still looks like it's going to be Kansas City ball. A lot of Goats players happy about that. Here's where I'd consider... Just 
tossing this ball right side into the flats to Jamal Williams and trying to set up their traditional offense. Iowa's just been all over him in the backfield. Maybe just get it out to Williams, see if he can't rumble for a big play. You might have to get away from your usual deep ball stuff here because Iowa's had an answer for it. See what else can work. And today, Williams just being bigger than other people has been the best thing that you've had going offensively. So it's confirmed knee was down. So good news, Kansas City able to keep possession. However, they did suffer the loss on the play. So still some work to be done here. Needing to gain nearly 20 yards in trouble. Hollins, here we go to Jamal Williams. Right on cue, and here he goes. How about that effort? And that's kind of what I was talking about. As they'll stop the clock there for the first down, and that's what he's able to give to this offense. And, I mean, my goodness, look at the tackle shed by Williams on this play. On what seemed like a broken play, too, because the snap was low. It rolled back to Hollins rather than catching it clean. And then Williams turns third and 20 and a busted play into a 21-yard gain and a first down. Now four broken tackles later. What a nice play for Jamal Williams, who, without a doubt, and an offense that has been sputtering all game long, he has been the offensive MVP for this Kansas City team. It's been and don't a forget, huge drive saver. Kansas City gets the ball to start the second half. So if you score here in these final 11 seconds, I mean, you've got a chance to be in the lead again before Iowa ever touches the football. Prime opportunity here for the top-seeded Goats. They were down by two scores early, were able to battle back, and tie it up at 21 earlier in this game. We've seen the Woo score 13 unanswered since. And now a chance for the Goats to potentially do the same here. Time running short here in the second. 11.2 seconds still on the clock. Still first and 10. Don't need to go. Martinez throws it forward to Hollins. Trying to run is down inside the five. Another timeout called. Right now, point seven is what's being showed. I think they could go back and add on a few more seconds. Taking into their bag of tricks are the goats here on this play. Yeah, they taking advantage of the double pass rules. They go screen near side, throw back to the quarterback. Hollins very nearly scores, which was a great yards after catch effort from him, but now one final play and you're about four yards out. Three yards out officially. Now here's where I might even be tempted to go back to your running game, spread them out. Don't get boxed in like goal line running. But back to what you were doing earlier. Put Martinez in the backfield, send him in motion. Iowa is going to be expecting pass here. I would just try a straight handoff up the middle to Martinez. See if he can't just use a little bit of wiggle room. You're going to have to ask him to break probably one tackle. And if he does, you got a touchdown. That's Hill they sent in motion. He throws over the middle, deflected and incomplete. DJ Lewis on the deflection. Again, looking in the direction of Jamal Williams. And just like that, another stop. How as hard the... it must be to beat a team four times in one season in this sport. This has a lot of shades of the second matchup. Back on June 15th, Kent City... Again, we're caught in a dogfight well into the fourth quarter and eventually with some late turnovers for touchdowns late in that game by Iowa. I was able to help Kansas City hold on to a 20-point win, 58-38. And this is an oh-so-important starting offensive possession here for Kansas City. Again, Hollins back in the backfield for the Goats. Rakeem Cato still suited up on the sideline, just not playing. We don't know if there's a potential injury or something that's keeping him out. This is Josh Hollins' offense for the time being as he throws over the middle and another one deflected down a handful of times already in the first half by Warren, and he gets another one here to start the second half. Yeah, that's been an issue for Hollins all day today. He's had a bunch of passes batted at the line, and 
it's not exactly as tight a pocket as it is in traditional 11-man football, so that's it's been a real issue for this offense. Had pressure coming down the pipe from Wilson, forcing him to get rid of it quickly. Wilson coming off pressure again, gets rid of it. This is Boo Smith, wrapped up, taken into the walls there by Naismith. A moderate game there on second down, about third and six upcoming. Got about half of it there, but yeah, I think that Kansas City is used to being able to bust off massive long plays at will. I think they're definitely been caught off guard by the lack of running room here today. There's been tight physical defense all night long, and this one skipped well short, attended for Boo Smith. And again, deep in their own territory, yeah, I think Kansas City is going to surrender this ball. That is not the... Wow. Coming out party Kansas City needed to have here in this half. Iowa just has to be feeling so good about how this is going thus far. This is going to come down right now to now the Kansas City defense is going to have to step up, try to cr get a turnover, create something. Definitely don't want to allow any more points right now. I think you let the Woo go down and score here. They go up three scores. This one could be well on its way to being the biggest upset in Arena League postseason history. Double pass. Let's it down the uh -oh. field. Had a man and incomplete. Trying to stretch it down the field to Crowell on the double pass. As initially it looked like the snap went to Nelson and he gave it back. I believe that was... Vernon Sharp, so the first time we've seen him in this game. Don't get much more open than that. If you're Kansas City now, you need to be able to take advantage of that gift you were just handed on the missed completion there. And if you're Iowa, you just have to hope that that doesn't come back to bite you. That's a go through the hands and incomplete. Trying to get it to Couch. Back-to-back -back plays where Kansas City benefits off of, first it was an errant throw, and then right there just a drop by Couch, straight up. Kansas City catching a couple of breaks in a row. And if Cato is able to play, I don't wonder how many more drives, though, like we've been seeing here out of Hollins, we're going to see before Cato doesn't end up back in this football game. That's a great question. And the hands are sharp again, firing downfield again. Has a man, brings it in, touchdown, woo. Went back to Crowell. And then he went over to the Kansas City bench to celebrate. And he's still talking to him over there. Well, his teammates talking to him over there. Vernon Sharp, the quarterback. Talking about how we didn't see Sharp that entire first half. Now he comes in. He missed a touchdown earlier, and a couple plays later, he gets it back there. Same man, Daniel Crowell, his third receiving touchdown of the game. Unbelievable. One-point conversion try here for the Woo. Boyd's the rush, sidearms it, intercepted. The conversion will be no good. Again, a lot of words being exchanged between these two squads tonight. A lot on the line and a 40-piece put up by the Woo. They have the lead 40-21 to 21, thanks to three receiving touchdowns from Daniel Crowell from Meriden, Mississippi and out of Jackson State University. That would definitely be interesting to see what Kansas City decides to do with their offense here. Are they going to try to change it up, change up some play calling, maybe make a switch at quarterback? It, it feels like something needs to happen to get them sparked back to their default setting again because right now they are just in a slump. Something has to change, and it has to change now. There's a lot of stunned faces right now around this crowd. Even a couple in this press box. Unbelievable performance so far tonight 
from the woo. Boo Smith on the return, runs into his own man and is brought down again, another short return. It's the third time they've put Boo Smith on a throw off return and he hasn't gotten outside of the 10 yard line. He's been bottled up. No, Iowa's displayed excellent kick coverage all day today. Special teams have been the weakness for Kansas City all year, but until today, it hasn't really affected their ability to dominate anyway. But now you're definitely starting to see more of that effect, and look who's in at quarterback. Yeah, perfect timing. I was just getting ready to give that to you, partner. Rakeem Cato back in the game, the signal caller for Kansas City. He started off the first couple of drives of the game and was taken out, so he is... Seen the majority of that first half from the Kansas City bench. Now he's back out there. Gets a quick completion on first down. They pass it back to him. Gets it away. Boo Smith in space. First down. And shoved up against the walls on the far side by Lamar Wilkes. So getting that initial first down there for Kansas City, that's big time. And again, it looks like it came on... Maybe a busted play, unless that was a designed flea flicker. Pressure across early from the Woo. Slipping a tackle, Ryan Martinez into Iowa territory. And now we're seeing some momentum build up here for Kansas City as a Woo defender definitely coming across that line early. I think they'll probably just take the play on this one, but I think they're going to want to get Ryan Martinez a lot more involved in this offense as the second half goes through. Wasn't necessarily too heavily involved in the first half, and with Boo Smith banged up, we're going to we're gonna learn a lot about how this offense feels about Martinez and how hard he can carry as the number one receiver. Wasting no time since Kansas City offense. Cato again, they find Boo. Two defenders bowled over. Maybe just getting back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing more. Roy Naismith. A kid from the fella at a New Haven University. 6'3", 220 pounds, and he looks every bit of the part. The way they're lined up on defense, you could definitely run against that front. Nice pick up on the throw there, about seven. And again, looking in the way of Ryan Martinez. We saw the rush attack and early emphasis of this Kansas City offense. Now being behind multiple scores, haven't seen it since. We've seen the aggressive pass rush from Iowa. It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe they try somewhere to put in a rush play. It's not going to be here. One hand snag from Cato throws and completes again. Boo Smith, good for a fresh set of downs. Yeah, I definitely think if Iowa keeps showing that wide nine defensive front, I, I, I'd I have to imagine Kansas City will try to go back to their running game once or twice because there's just a massive gap to be run behind right there. Snap well, almost over the head of Cato. Able to get it to Williams. Stop, changes directions. Look at the big fella go! Stretching out for the goal line. His knee might be down at the one. And I think that's where they're going to mark him. But again, another nice improv play from Jamal Williams. He has just been incredible. I think his knee might have been down back at the four, but he's just so long that the ball was able to get all the way to the one. It's incredible. He, he is playing his heart out here tonight as we've got a player down along that far wall. So I will woo a little slow to get up. I believe it might have been. It's DJ Lewis. He's up. Wanted to stay in the game, but Coach Zimmerman's going to have the young man check out for the time being. He'll get checked out by the trainers. Imagine we'll see him back in this game. One of the heartthrobs of this Iowa Woo defense. They might not have a play for it, but there might be some consideration to just turn and hand the ball to Williams at some point here today. He has been an effective runner with the ball in his hands, especially in these short yardage scenarios like this one right here. It's really hard to keep his big frame from just picking up those extra yards or two after contact. They pitch it back. Martinez avoids one. 
Going all the way across, back the other way. Now cuts back to the middle. Met and sandwiched at the one-yard line. Great. He had Hill wide open in that back corner, too, if he had thought to pull up and throw it. Almost scored there. It's actually shocking to me he didn't end up scoring. As hard as he runs, Iowa has to be commended for managing to hold him there at that one-yard line and get him to the ground without him falling forward. There they go, and again to Jamal Williams, another touchdown on the night. Feed your best players, Dylan. Williams just goes right to the post here. Doesn't even really run much of a route. He's just running right to the seam and says, I'm just going to beat him inside, post up, get it to me. And Kansas City able to get back on the scoreboard. One point conversion coming up here. Oh, and this one out of the reach of Boo Smith. Cato putting the hands up saying, my bad. Might have been blaming the gloves. Might have been. He, he kind of gave him a look over, rubbed them together, <laughs> stuck the hand in the air. Well, you know it's humid down there, Dylan. Those gloves get a little slippery. They can. They definitely can. No doubt about it. He's out there. I can see the, I can see the quarterback in my mind in the NFL that wears two gloves, but I can't. I know Kenny Pickett. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Not too often you see the quarterback wearing two gloves over the hands, but... Manning, post-neck surgery. That's true. Or Jim McMahon, if we're going back to the 80s. Uh, let's, How far let's, back you want to go? Let's have the Bears fan bring up. <laughs> oh, McMahon. You love it. Oh, positive news for the Goats. At least they answered the opening touchdown from Iowa, but still work to do here. Second possession upcoming here in the third, and another big return for Henson in the Goats' territory. And that's just almost becoming second nature for this throw-off return team for Iowa. It's just create some lanes and let Kyler Henson run loose. Now Kansas City's going to have to ask some big things of their defense here. Boo Smith obviously not playing much defense anymore, but this would have been a spectacular time for one of those pick sixes. Might have for a sec, able to get it away. Well, was Smith in the backfield, all up in the kitchen of Nelson, but able to get rid of it to avoid the big loss. Helps to have a quarterback at that size, too. When you're 230 pounds, sometimes you get, you're able to get off a couple more throwaways and passes than smaller quarterbacks while under duress like that. Second and 10, back to Sharp, and now back to Nelson. Pressure again from Smith. Nelson can run with it, makes one man miss, spins out of another. Able to rumble his way close to the it's about the 15. So we'll mark him right there and enough. Well, see, I didn't think. I didn't think he was there. Uh, let's get the chain game figured out here. Mitchell's timeout. It is a nice change to see earlier in the season, especially when the home games were being held in Municipal Auditorium. We didn't see much of a chain game. There were efforts of a chain game being out there, but had a hard time battling when players would crash into the walls. They would be tangled up in the chains and it was a bit of a sloppy ordeal at times, and also just for the chain gang members, not wanting to risk their lives out there, risking a chance of being sandwiched up against the walls, but good to see we have them here at St. Pius. Penalty flag comes down. The pass is complete near side for the first down to Goulborn. So this penalty will be interesting. I didn't see anything myself, so... 
It's a first down if this is against Kansas City, but they're indicating that this one's coming back. And this is going to be penalty number 10 of the game for Iowa if it does, in fact, be on the woo, and it is. An illegal shift. They had two guys in motion. Back him up five yards, third down and six. Still in a good position here in Kansas City territory. So looks like you have Henson and Sharp. Henson, man in motion. Nelson pitches it back to Sharp. He goes back to Nelson, who is wrapped up. Able to throw it away. And intercepted by Ben Thomas, his second of the game. Look at him go. Just what the... Goats needed! Touchdown, Kansas City! Now hold up, there is a flag back in the secondary, so before celebrations start, we're gonna wanna hear what this is. It's at about the seven yard line on the other end of the field. And it was down on the field before the pass was thrown, so. Let's wait and see. It's holding against the Goats. My goodness. At least according to Kyler Henson, the way he's signaling. Now, the referees are going to talk about it, but if they decide to call this thing, Henson's indicating that this is defensive holding. And considering where the flag was, it would have been on the opposite side of the field. Well, now Cato is indicating it's holding on the offense, so... Well, we know one thing. Nobody's going to own up and say, yeah, it's all me. <laughs> but no, but I'm just talking about what they, they walk up to the officials. They clearly are hearing the word holding and then pointing at the other team. Again, I'm not sure. Again, again, you'll see it here on the replay. The flag is already down on the field, so we didn't get to see what had happened. But Yes, it is against Iowa. Declined by Kansas City. Touchdown will stand. And once again, as you mentioned, it was Ben Thomas making another huge defensive play in this game. Ben Thomas' legacy game continues, Dylan. It does. In a much-needed time, earning defensive player of the week honors just a couple of weeks ago for the whole league and just snagged his second interception, took it back to the house, and most importantly, has brought the Goats back with him one possession and that could be the pivotal moment of this game that we could look back to if the Goats are able to battle back in this game and potentially win. We could look back to that specific play from Ben Thomas and say that was the turning point right there. It has been a wild ride to say the least. And now the offense is going to go on there kind of cold and see if they can't just run a conversion play here real quick. It's kind of a big conversion, too, to be down just six means you could take the lead with your next score. Again, just going for a one-point conversion. Cato back to Martinez. Flips it to Williams. Gives it back to Martinez. Breaks some ankles. Trying to get a block. Still looking. Still weaving. Ball comes loose at the end. It's in the back of the end zone. Did he cross the line before it came loose? Official in the end zone says no, it's a no good conversion. And a touch, but yeah, so did not no cross good. the line. Martinez took a shot there at the end to jar this ball loose. That is wildly close. It was Naismith, the man that put the helmet on the ball and popped it loose from Martinez right before he crossed the goal line. I mean, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks of Zay Flowers and Legereus Sneed <laughs> that punch out the AFC title game. I mean, that's how close it was. Good news for the Goats, though, is that pick six did stand after all the penalty markers on the field, and it is still a one-possession game. But you can't see the way that this game has gone for him at parts in this game will absolutely take it. 
What a game so far. First ever Arena League playoff game in Kansas City. We have been treated to quite a unique one. And we got Goldborn down on the field blowing kisses to the Kansas City bench. Interesting time to do that. Yeah. Well, these sidelines are no love loss between the two. No, and obviously this was the game where we had a coach ejected the first time we had the call yes. between these two teams. It was Mook Zimmerman. And it was almost at a point just like this. And there was a the disqualification, if I recall. Yes. It was definitely a very unique time back then. June 15th meeting between these two. Fans starting to get back into it now. 40 to 33, Iowa still with the lead. That big pick six from Ben Thomas. He's ready to run down the field on throw off coverage. He's there at the bottom of your screen. They just announced as well that the Conversion was reviewed, and the play stands is no good. And that's Trujillo. where the booze came from. That was up in the air, and well said, Aaron. So, again, it was a bang, bang play. And you would almost need a camera going right down the goal line to really get a definitive look to see if he had crossed before that ball came loose or if he had already crossed the plane and then the ball came loose after the fact. But again, all importance back on the shoulders of this Kansas City defense tasked with getting another stop and keeping this a one-possession game the next time their offense steps out onto the field. They would even yeah. take it if the next time they step on the field and the game's tied. Yeah, and get ben, another pick six and successful conversion. Trujillo and Ben Thomas kind of known for their antics with such things. Pressure from the Goats, easy reception, first down and more. Ball comes loose and scooped up by the Goats. Unbelievable. Well, boy, has this game flipped. And this crowd is right back into it, and they are intensely into it. Popped loose out of the hands of Crowell. I believe that was Lamar Robbins was the one that got on top of it for Kansas City. My, oh my. And on what was looking like a very promising play there for Iowa, too, that was going to be a massive gain. So we've talked a lot about penalties as well. As Cato just pitches this one to Williams, fakes the pitch. Look at the big man, Rumble. First down picked up there. Fourth turnover in the game for Iowa compared to only one for Kansas City. Ten penalties in the game for Iowa, two for Kansas City. And another solid reception and run by Jamal Williams. And here's a run up the middle from Corral Hill. Plenty of space. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier with that massive gap that Iowa has given up right up the middle. As they go to this wide nine set defensively. I was wondering when Kansas City was going to try the running game, and now they're coming down a little closer to the line. Under a minute to go, Cato, quick pass. Boo Smith turns the corner. Touchdown, Kansas City. Words exchanged after, but one thing for certain, the Goats one point away from tying this game up for the second time since 21 all. And since they put Cato back in when it was 40 to 21. Now, as you mentioned, just an extra point away from being right back to a tie game and a clean slate. And a, a good portion of that has to go to the defense, but man, the QB switch has really changed some of the vibes in this one. Cato got him to come across early, free play. Fires to the end zone. Almost brought in by Cox, but it's incomplete, but again, Early movement across the line, so they'll just move the ball up even closer. A second chance here for Kansas City to tie the game up. Yeah, you got a free chance at it. 
give your guy a jump ball there. I mean, definitely don't take the sack or throw it away when you know you're going to get a, a free chance. There's no harm to be done. So now from a little bit closer, let's see uh, what play call they got going If they here. get it off. Clock has stopped, I believe it. Yeah, okay, extra point. They should just be snapping this. Yeah. That's what the official had to tell him. There we go. Say clock operator, let the clock run after. <laughs> Gonna have to get some water boys off the field. On time down here, Goat's trying to tie the game up. And now Williams goes early here, and they might just give those free yards back over to Iowa. A little bit of extra change on it, too, because this will back them up to about the seven and a half. This is a big extra point, too. This is to tie it. This is. Back to the seven. Cato fakes to give it to Martinez. Directs traffic, throws to the end zone. Back of the end zone, over the wall. It is caught. We what a snag. are tied. That's Boo. Almost flipping over the wall. Defender right there on top of him. What a snag by Boo Smith. An ever so important one-point conversion. So go to your most trusted receiver. Nice fourth quarter coming down to the wire here. Still, anybody's ball game. Winner go home. Trujillo sends this one into the air. Henson in his own end zone. Ooh. Good jab step. Makes one man miss. Another nice, solid return from Kyler Henson. Battered against the wall on the near side. Yeah, that was a violent tackle into the wall, but a nice return, as you mentioned. Now, once again, we've said it before, a couple of moments like this for Iowa. Do they respond well? to a 19-point lead suddenly going down the drain. They did well earlier giving up the 13-point lead, but this one a little more, or 14-point lead, sorry. This one a little more intense than that. How does Iowa respond offensively? Kansas City has a tendency to when their defense starts the takeaway train, they really start rolling. Easy completion out of the gates. Goulborn shakes off one defender in the Goats territory. Let me mark down at around the 24 on Kansas City side of the field. This is almost close to what the Wu were facing earlier. Back in that first half, they responded by scoring 13 unanswered points. We'll see what they can do here. Crowd starting to get a little loud, trying to get into it. Goats appear maybe to be bring pressure. It's Cofield. They run it on the far side. First down picked up. And a nice little run there for Iowa. Once again, putting a nice drive together after it looks like they've lost all the momentum. They've been very good at responding thus far today. I've been very impressed with what Iowa has shown in these types of moments all day when the adversity really hits them. It's usually not a trademark you might see of a team that's 1-7 overall in the year. They have been bringing it tonight, Blaine. Very impressive. Throw for Nelson. Caught. Right into the wall he goes. We'll that to Ola Bryce. They've also done a little retooling as well as the year has gone on. That's true. But it's just the fact that they've always had this trait about them of kind of making these games and making their opposition kind of get down in the dirt with them and really make them earn the victory. They have had Kansas City on the ropes for the majority of this game. Looking to reclaim the lead on this drive. It's a nice one right now. This one's fired to McFarland, who's upended. Down to oh, close to the two-yard line. So again, we ask, how is Iowa going to answer? Well, right now they're two yards away from retaking the lead on a drive that has just looked effortless so far after having back-to-back -back turnovers on their last two offensive possessions. And now we'll see if they don't try to just use some of their size advantage and pound this thing into the end zone. 
Hooked up. Not going anywhere. Kansas City's also had a couple of big time goal line stands this season. I think this, this crowd would pretty well erupt if they get another one here. The give to Walters on that one. Got wrapped up around the ankle. Might have even lost a yard. Still time here. Second and goal for Iowa. Under 11 and a half minutes in regulation. Nelson caught. Backpedaling. Able to complete it to Ola Bryce, but not going anywhere. Defense really starting to heat up here, Dylan. And Man, you can kind of feel it. Two more plays. Iowa, if not just to get the lead back, I think Iowa needs to score here just to prevent what would happen with this crowd if they give Kansas City a goal line stand. Nelson in the end zone, wide open, near side. Touchdown, Iowa, and Miles Gulborn. Once again, Iowa with a great response. They are not going to allow something as fickle as momentum dictate whether or not they leave here with another game to play or not. They are going to make Kansas City earn it. Or take it from them outright. Going back, one point conversion, trying to make it a seven-point ball game again. Nelson makes a man miss and will go into the end zone. And what an answer from the Woo. Turnovers on the last two offensive possessions. They've seen their 13-point lead withered away back to a tie ball game. And they march right down the field, looking like Kansas City was close to making a goal line instead. They cash in on third and goal, a touchdown pass from Nelson to Miles Goulborn for his first of the game. And that puts Iowa back up 47-40. And now we're going to get another look at this Cato-led offense. The last few times that this has happened where Kansas City climbed back, Iowa took the lead right back and then also snowballed once again. We'll see if Kansas City can turn this back into more of a give and take type of a shootout or can Iowa continue the trend will they have a 20 point lead again before we know it sort of how the ebbs of this game have flowed fourth and final quarter back with the lead is Iowa looking to pull off the biggest upset in the short league history Boo Smith staying on his feet makes another man miss Back pedals a little bit. I think he probably needs to just get upfield on that one. Maybe cut back a few too many times. Takes me flashbacks to Demarcus Robinson in his days in Kansas City. Nonetheless, that's the mentality of Boo Smith of trying anything to come up with a big play. As you can tell, he is definitely out there not at 100%. Look, another solid hit. Below the waist, lower body. It's a handoff, plenty of space for Correll Hill. Nice head of steam. Well, now we're starting to see the running game get reintroduced back into this offense, Aaron. Yeah, and I think as long as they continue to give you the space to do it, I would just keep running it at them until they condense inside. Play action, Williams, green grass and more, first down. Look at him go, it has been so fun. That is a large person. Seven wants will give his measurables again here. Pull up the stat sheet. I know his height comes in at that six five and two hundred and thirty pounds. He plays somehow though even bigger than that. It's amazing to watch. Back to give Cato sidearm. Boo Smith. Touchdown Kansas City. I think the White Hats coming in saying he might have been down at the wall at the one. That's what he's going to say, yeah. First and goal. 
Regardless, now, though, yeah. nice play there by Smith using the speed. And now Kansas City needs to not get distraught by that spot and just find a way to pound this in real quick. So we're starting to see this Kansas City offense back in there behind Rakeem Cato start to find their stride. They're going to go back-to-back -back drives of hitting pay dirt. Under five on the play, Cock. And it's Cato looking for an option. He heaves it in the air, and it's intercepted. Can't do that. Unbelievable. It's a game of inches. I mean, really, that... So as it turns out, Smith being down at the one ends up being costly, and, I mean, you just got to throw that one away. There, There is just no reason in a mm. game this big, in a situation that pivotal, to just throw up a 50-50 ball like that off your back foot. Definitely a head-scratching moment. Rakeem Cato visibly frustrated after the play. Costly, costly of a mistake. On the play before that initially ruled as a touchdown for Boo Smith, it was pretty obvious that he was pinned against the wall about a yard short, so there's no controversy as far as that goes. My goodness, you hear it all the time. It's a bit of a cliche, especially in football, but a game of inches, right? <laughs> None more prevalent than right there. Well, and obviously now it's going to be up to the Kansas City defense. Takeaway would be well-received here among the faithful. And for Iowa, you know, I talked about it just a second ago, the way that they tend to pile on their own momentum. This game hasn't been back and forth in the sense it's been 7-7, seven to 7-7, seven, seven to se you know, mm -hmm. those kind of trades. I mean, it's usually chunks of about 20 at a time that these two teams like to trade back and forth. So first and ten at their own five for the Woo. Pass looking for Goulborn. Hit immediately in the back coming in. And a race amongst the teenagers to get that souvenir ball. A nice souvenir, somebody to take home. Happy man in the stands right now. Hey, that's why you pay extra for those box seats. Smith with pressure. Nelson heaves it and just got rid of it incomplete. Another souvenir as well. Some high fives being handed out to the fan. Third and 10 upcoming here for Iowa. And this is the chance here for Kansas City. If you're able to force another incompletion here and pin them, keep them deep in their own territory, then you have them entertain the idea of probably more than likely surrendering it. Yeah, this is going to be a pivotal play here for both of these teams. Nelson throws right at the sticks and completes it. Yeah, there's no way he wasn't across the line of scrimmage. I was getting ready to say the same thing. Angelo Trujillo right on top of it. Flag came in late, but I think there was no question. Definitely across the line of scrimmage was Nelson. Yeah. Now to the production crew running the replay, getting a good look at that one. So this one's going to be coming back. Officials will also have a brief conversation with each team about some of the extracurriculars that took place during the tackle. Discussions such as, don't do that and please stop. That's well said. It's also a loss of down penalty as well. This isn't a situation like a hold where it's going to be just back them up and try again. This is going to make it fourth down and long. I mean, unless there was an offsetting against Kansas City. So, I mean, if they're going to use a surrender, I mean, if they were planning to do it at all, I can't imagine a scenario more inclined to do it than this. Mm -hmm. Backed up at your backs to your own goal line. Yeah, inside your own five-yard line. You're up by you're up by seven late, you know, starting to get into the later part of the fourth quarter now. The five minutes, 25 seconds is what the 
Game clock shows. The length of this discussion, though, I think uh, should concern some of the Kansas City I fans. Agree. Because the only reason it would take this long is if they're talking about maybe he was behind the line. Then they're talking about where to spot it and stuff that would create some of the length of this. I mean, if he was across the line of scrimmage, or, then nothing else would really matter. Or if I, I didn't see if there was anything that might have came in after the play. I don't see anything be flagged against Kansas City, but now the crowd voicing their displeasure with some boos raining in. Real Hill, man of the people with a photo shoot on the far side. Excuse me, Dwayne Autry. Taking some photos with some fans in the field side suites. As they continue to talk this one out. And again, like you said, Aaron, the longer this conversation goes on, the more worrisome you got to be if you're on that Kansas City sideline. Yeah, especially when it seems like this is your opportunity that they're probably going to get the ball back. You don't want to float that opportunity down the river. Haven't had a definitive call yet. Now we have Coach Zimmerman for Iowa getting in there trying to plead his case. You don't suppose he'd get himself ejected again, right? That happened to him the first time. He said not a lot to be really upset about in this game. His team has come on the road and has played exceptionally well here in the postseason. Where things currently stand, they're a little under five and a half minutes away from sending number one home. Waiting on the call, though, of course. Whatever they're discussing, pending. What, what looked like would just be an easy call of illegal forward pass, lost it down. Yeah, he's now being sent to New York via pigeon mail <laughs> for further review. Be very intrigued. Looks like we've reached a verdict. Official on the field still getting in his earpiece from the sky judge up here in the press box. Here that is New York getting back with him. What a big, what a big call! <laughs> we're we're they really must about to get really here. be wanting to get this thing right. Is all I can imagine is that they're looking over every camera angle they've got as to whether or not he was across that line of scrimmage. This is almost remarkable how long this is going on. I mean. Any part of the body behind the line makes it an illegal forward pass. I mean, it looked like it was illegal. Now we're seeing this Kansas City offense come out, so I think. Yeah, I, th I think his whole body was across, but that must be the only thing that was keeping him held up. I mean, if. If the backmost cleat of your heel is still behind the line, it's, considered... it's still a good pass. Yes. So I think they must have just been squinting their eyes and really staring at that screen, trying to make sure they got it right. But ultimately they do, and they keep the call on the field. I think that was probably the right thing there, Dylan. Yeah. Which, I'm, you know, I'm fine with them at this point in the game. In the fourth quarter, one possession game of the postseason, I don't mind. And a pivotal call like that to take the extra time to try to figure it out. So even though it's something that maybe the folks at home are saying that was something that we saw clear and obvious over five minutes ago, what took so long? Nonetheless, Kansas City going to be getting the ball back here, down by seven. Yeah, they're going to use the surrender as we yep. assumed. Now what I'd be... Would I have been very surprised if they would have came out, try the fourth down conversion? Absolutely. That's. I feel like this From is... From your own two. This is what the the surrenders, this is what they're in the rule book for, is for these kind of scenarios in a league that is pretty much abolished, all, all kicking, all any kinds of 
giving the ball away outside of turnovers. This is the perfect time to use it for Iowa. Now the problem is, is that this Kansas City offense has found their stride. They came up a yard short of a game tying touchdown on the last possession. What can they do here? Correll Hill bounces off his man, comes to the near side, shoulder tackled into the wall, past the 20. And a nice solid run on first down. Yeah, nicely done, being patient, but then also not being greedy. We've seen a few times this season the Goats runners having a a feeling like every play needs to score. He just realized that play was blown up, and rather than trying to dance, make a couple men miss, he just found the six yards that were there and went and got them. Nice catch. Boo Smith, first down and more in Iowa territory. Nicely done, Boo Smith in the flats. They've been leaking him out a lot today. He has, for most of the year, been their deep play threat, but... Two weeks in a row, he's been used more in an underneath route capacity. First and 10 play here for Kansas City. Cato with time, finds the big body of Jamal Williams. Look at him move. Lateral it back dangerously. Uh -oh. oh my goodness. That's Iowa football. Yeah, I, I think maybe you, you're just gonna wanna Go ahead and just take your six yards on that one. I'm not sure why you make the decision to try to pitch that ball there, but. Unbelievable. That has absolutely just burned Kansas City badly with 3.57 to go. And a guy that, I mean, you don't necessarily want anyone to put any blame on Jamal Williams for anything. The way he's played today, he's been the offensive MVP, but man, that is just backbreaking. While we do have a time here, a scoring update on the game up in Duluth, I think we can confidently say it's going to be the Harbor Monsters will be one of the representatives in Arena Mania next week as they're currently up 44-12, to a little over 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter up in Duluth over the Ozark Lunkers. Almost looked like oh, they man. had him in the backfield, way to make something out of nothing. Carson Walter. That might have been one of the plays of the year. And it was only a six-yard gain. That was just wild to prevent it from being a big-time five-yard loss and change the complexion of this entire drive. Now you're kind of back on schedule. And scoring is, I mean, almost secondary on this drive, mm. just eating up three minutes worth of clock here. First downs are almost more important than big plays. And the clock will continue to run until we get under two minutes. Then it will stop when it's supposed to. And a nice play for Kyler Henson is stopped short of the goal line. And again, I think if you're Iowa, you have no problem with that there. Goal to go up coming inside the five. Yeah, now it's all going to come down. Obviously, no field goals in this league. So it's going to come down to this next few set of downs. Kansas City. They're going to need a goal line stand here to give themselves any hope. Now, with the league rules here, there is the option when you score, if they do go down two possessions, for that fourth and long play. As opposed to the onside kick, as Henson just runs it in off the left side. And the potential dagger. And the decision to attempt that pitch man that is that is coming up huge now we're going to run it down to the two minute warning so next play will be this conversion coming up here for Iowa 53-40 with the lead over Kansas City again I'm Dylan Funk alongside Aaron Feely on the call tonight, and I feel like we've said it many times tonight, Aaron, but nobody expected this at this point in this game to be where we're at right now. This is absolutely an incredible on-the-road performance from one win, Iowa. One and seven on the season, 0-3 in the regular season against Kansas City, and now all of a sudden they're up by two scores. 
and could potentially send top-seeded Kansas City packing and punch their ticket to Arena Mania to take on the Duluth Harbor Monsters next week. They're actually going to back him up two additional yards here and say he was down at the five, not the three. So here we go for Kansas City. Or my apologies, I, I went back in time two plays there. This is the one-point conversion. <laughs> for Kansas City, that fourth down onside kick option is going to be really big time for them. Nelson throws this one out of reach of Henson and incomplete. As they've got two minutes now, they're going to need a score to convert that fourth down play and then score again. So definitely not impossible, but certainly getting to the point of needing some big time playmakers to step up here if you're KC. Which again, we've, we've talked about it. The last two drives that just ended in turnovers, again, I like it. It's been hard for this Kansas City offense to get going in the second half, especially since the second coming of Rakeem Cato, since he's made his way back into the game. I go back to Boo Smith being a yard short, and then the interception in the next play, and then Jamal Williams picking up the first down in Iowa territory. If you don't try to pitch it back, <laughs> of course, hindsight's always 20 20, but my goodness. Throw off in the air, Boo Smith coming out of his own end zone. A big return here. Could be huge. Smith trying to stay on his feet. Don't pitch it. And a penalty oh, flag man. comes in, and this could be. We'll see who it's against. As that was, I believe, Walters for Iowa. So he got tangled up with the Kansas City GOAT. Looked like that was Murray. It, he stood over. He had him pinned up against the wall. and I don't know what led to it, but he was he was talking up something fierce. I believe that's that was Walter that drove Murray into the barrier. He did, yeah, and then he got up and had some words about it. Flags came flying. This would be huge. It can add on some big additional yards here on the good return for Boo Smith for Kansas City. will once again patiently await them to sort everything out. You write some names and numbers down in the book. Keep a track of personal fouls. Yep. Oh, they got them both. But the penalty yardage being enforced, that is what's important. Thanks to the unsportsmanlike this. at the end, yeah. But yes. that does mean, though, that now Murray also has a personal foul against him. So a second one would mean his ejection. Minute 52 on the clock. Cato looking to pass as a man oh. dropped it. Couldn't squeeze the fingers there, Dylan. That would have been... oh. That would have been exactly what Kansas City needed to score that quickly. Oh, that's one you're going to want back. Dropped by Carell Hill, who was sent in motion before the snap. Looks like they're going to line him up to put him in motion again. This time they hand it to him. Plenty of space. It's down close to the five. We're going to rule him just short of that first down, but nice run once again. No, they're going to give it to him. Clock continues to run. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And a half. He is short by one yard. Cato to Smith. Brought down immediately at the line of scrimmage. No, they're going to say he just got a yard, so he picks up the first down. However, that clock continues to run. We barrel towards a minute. Goal to go here for the Goats. Cato 
Nearly <laughs> intercepted. Would have been DJ Lewis if he squeezed it. And that would have been all she wrote instead. I Means second down. And the positive out of that for Kansas City is that does stop the clock at a minute, three seconds. Huge break caught once again for the Goats. Gato steps up, fires it. Brian Cox, touchdown by the penalty marker. In the backfield could be a potential hold. Yeah, this might be backing him up. Or it could be on Kato if they're going to say. See, where was he at? They're going to rule yep. a hold on the, the hold. block. That is deflating for mm. these goats and this home crowd. So now you're still 15 yards away from the first of two scores that you'll need. Mm -mm -mm. Gato with time. Throws middle of the end zone. Oh, touchdown, Ryan Martinez. Unbelievable catch from Martinez. Man, oh man. Number seven showing off the stickies. He had Hill wide open in that far corner, but he wanted to get on ESPN instead, I guess, and gave Martinez that one. Kansas City bobbles to go for the one-point conversion. This is a live ball, and it'll be placed down in midfield. Jumping on top of it is Wilson. And the one-point conversion not successful. Well, so now you're going to have a decision the next time you score. If, if you, you score. The score. So they'll surely go for this fourth down play. Yeah, Try means. to get the ball back. Yep. And then if you're able to score again, you can go for one and force the overtime. Or... Or <laughs> you can go for that two-pointer and try to win it in regulation. But that is a problem for the future. First, you got to pick up this yeah. first down. You have no room to try to look ahead in this game right now. One play at a time, tackle what's right in front of you. So this is it. We've only seen this a couple of times. You and I have, Aaron. But this is seven onside kick. It's a fourth and 15 play. Kansas City has to convert to keep possession, and they throw it. Looking for Booth Smith, double coverage, and it's incomplete. Batted down by D.J. Lewis. And that might be the season for Kansas City. Seven and one on the year. And it looks like it's going to end in round one of the playoffs. Also had Wilkes in coverage. Unbelievable. And folks in Duluth, I'm sure, are scoreboard watching right now. And they have to be excited as of where things stand right now. Could potentially be hosting an Arena Mania championship game. 51.7 seconds on the clock. And the Wu with the ball up by seven at the Kansas City five-yard line. They're going to run a play, trip down, quick timeout called. Ben Thomas stiffing that run out. And tackle for loss. Yeah, and that's key for them here is now, I mean, the decision had to be made. Are you going to try to get the stop, use your timeouts, and then try to go no timeout, big play offense, or, again, utilizing that fourth down thing, do you just try to let him score on the first play and then see if you can score twice? Good. But obviously we just saw which strategy they're going to go with. They're playing full defense to the end here. They still, That was the first timeout, so they still have two remaining. Imagine that for Iowa, probably just content keeping this ball on the ground. And they do. Ball oh. is loose, but right on top of it is McFarland. 
<laughs> Heads up play by McFarland. You want to talk about what would have happened? <laughs> a few of the members of the audience or the, the crowd here were starting to, you know, shake hands with some of the people they came with. Oh, hey. You know, that's a shame. We'll see you guys next year. Blah, blah. <laughs> Imagine if that ball had been recovered by Kansas City. My goodness. That would have been some people jumping over some fences to get back in here, I think. <laughs> be like when people left the fog early when West Virginia was in town and they made the comeback. Forty three point nine seconds. This is third down upcoming here. Only one timeout remaining for Kansas City. Autry trying to get this home crowd fired up. Two in the backfield. Now set in motion is Ola Bryce. Nelson. To throw, feeling pressure, tripped up from behind, Keybon Smith. And you know the biggest part of that is obviously you, you get the loss now, it's going to be fourth down. But now, field position wise, because you sacked him way back here, if you get this stop on fourth down, I mean, instead of having it at your own five with no timeouts, I mean, you might have this ball near midfield if you can get this stop. Yep, final timeout burned by Kansas City. 37.7 seconds on the game clock. Fourth and forever. Now you have to make sure your DBs don't get complacent thinking that this is a foregone conclusion either that you've made this stop. Start congratulating each other. You have to make sure now after your defensive front just got you to this point on this fourth down play, you better make sure no one gets behind you or gets loose in that end zone. Home crowd's going to rally behind this defense one more time. Kansas City all out of timeouts. Need to get the stop here. If you have a defensive penalty, this game is over. Snap is back to Nelson. One man on the rush is Cofield. Blocked by McFarlane. Throws to the end zone. Bow oh, it up and it's caught. It is caught by Goulborn. Touchdown, Iowa. Heartbreak, Kansas City. And he's making the rounds, waving goodbye to the fans. Oh, my goodness. Off the tip. What an insane football game. Mm. Second receiving touchdown for Miles Goulborn. Nelson oh. breaks out of the sack from Smith, heaves it. <laughs> the I fan playing defense. Could have used him on the last play. <laughs> Absolute shocking what has happened here in this game. Well, now it's absolutely going to come down to you're going to be in Hail Mary mode twice in a row for KC. You're going to need either this return to go for a touchdown or a touchdown on the first or second play, and then you're going to need a one or two play touchdown on your fourth down and 15 play. But it looks like Iowa is putting the, the finishing touches on a shocking victory here in North Kansas City at St. Pius High School. 27.8 seconds. 59-46. Two possession lead for Iowa. Looks like Boo Smith will be Back to receive, a lot of hanging heads on that Kansas City sideline right now. And 
hard to blame, but you got to find a way to bring it together here. If you can find a quick score, you can you leave it up to another fourth and 15. Never say never. But time is definitely not on your side, and you're out of timeouts. Iowa under 30 seconds away from Marina Mania as this one just goes out of play. So I believe that's, that'll put it at midfield. Yeah, that's not that's not a great penalty there for Iowa. I understand you don't want to give Boo Smith a good chance to try to return something. But at the same time, now that penalty, you just gave him really great field position, so well, and your kickoff or your throwoff coverage has been spectacular all day, and now you haven't made Kansas City waste any of these seconds. So there's still a full 27.8 left. Martinez in motion. Cato goes short and incomplete, trying to get it to Hill. Probably better that I was incomplete rather than gaining the five yards and wasting probably 15 or so seconds. Yep. I was still with all three of their timeouts. If they see a matchup on offense they don't like for Kansas City, they do have the choice. They can try to take a timeout. Smith this time in motion for the Goats. Cato gets rid of it quickly, finds Hill, runs right to the sticks, picks up the first down. They got to hurry. Clock is stopped, 18 seconds. They'll spot the ball, and on the official's whistle, it will go. So you have to make sure you are set here and ready to run this play. You need a touchdown maybe right now. Cato to the end zone. And I believe, was there a penalty marker? I think that might have been a tennis ball that was yellow yeah. that we saw flash across our, our vision there. Very deceiving. Of course. Well, hold on. There might have been. Kansas City's moving forward. So there was. There was a pass interference. Was it in the end zone? So there you go. Yes. Interference in the corner. That'll help. Of course, now 14 seconds left. You really need to make sure it's score on this play. Hill in the backfield with Cato. Calls for it. They pitch it out to him, and they throw it. Almost intercepted, looking to get it to Martinez. Precious seconds take away 10.2 now on the clock. Yeah, really, you just need to make sure that if you're able to get the score here, it needs to be with enough time to run one more play. You can't afford a, a touchdown with no seconds left because that does you no good at all. Right now... Now they get it away and running it in. 5.8 seconds on the clock. And that will go as a touchdown. And that's, that's huge. I believe that's Hollins in there too. And remember, they're, they're going to have to run that fourth and 15 from their own five. But lest we forget that, I mean, it's only a 50-yard field. So you're still only talking about a 45-yard Hail Mary. I mean, most average people aren't going to be able to throw that. But, you know, for professional quarterback... Say so untimed down here, then this one is deflected. As Cato was looking to get it back to Martinez. So here we go. 5.8 seconds, fourth and fifteen play. Upcoming. You might as well not call it fourth. It's just fourth down. This is This is just a Hail Mary. Season. And I don't know if they'll go full Hail Mary, or maybe you try to run a hook and ladder type of play. Get it in Jamal Williams' hands, maybe short. Let him run, see what he can get, and then if he's into trouble, have your fast guys behind him to pitch to. And see what kind of NFL Street 2 for the PS2 nonsense you can get going on. Like the reference. I've, I've got my, my, uh, my Sony references. Don't you guys worry. Now or never for Kansas City. Smith in motion. Cato pressured immediately. Has to give it to Martinez. Dance around his That's zone. a face mask. That is a face mask, and the flag is down, and Martinez is running with it. Gets a block. Gets another. Clay Martinez! Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. 
It was going to be a free play anyway. And a face mask on Iowa. It is declined. The score is good for Ryan Martinez. Now, do you go for two and go for the win? No, they're going to go for one, which is interesting. No, they are. They're going for two. Oh, my goodness. Untimed on the fourth down play as well. So still 5.8 seconds. Kansas City looking to go for the win. So if you don't get this, you have the option to do what you just did again and run another fourth down and 15 play. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle this, in. This two-pointer. Wow. Smith up to the line of scrimmage. Cato back to Martinez. Martinez, he's going to try to go again. And he flattered it late. It's short. Now, I don't think Martinez is aware that there's still 5.8 seconds left. He's down on the field. He's looking disappointed like they just lost this game. I, Not officially. I. So here's my... Try to go for one in that scenario. Because, again, like we mentioned, you still have the option. If you want to try to go for the win on the 4th and 15th play, you can. So now you got to try to replicate the magic that you just had on the last 4th down play. Martinez exhausted out there. I'd see how much leeway these officials will give you to see if you can't make this a nice long walk back to the five. See if you can't catch your breath. I mean, you're at your own five anyway. I'd consider if your guys aren't ready to snap this ball, just take the delay a game. Go back two and a half yards and make sure everyone gets a good catch of their breath yep. before you run this play. Unbelievable what we have seen in this game. I mean, just even in the last minute of this fourth quarter. Goat still a point shy. Can they duplicate the magic they just had? Cato avoids the rush. He's going to heave it down the field to Boo Smith. And it's incomplete once a flag is not going to get it. Heck of a throw from Cato. And now Iowa's got a, a pass rusher down in the end zone. I believe I saw number four, so that would be Wilson. So they'll need to tend to him, and then you assume Iowa will come out and take the kneel down. Man, for this to end in a one-point finish... It really did all come down to that safety earlier in the it game. Did. It did. So many different plays that we can look back on in this one. With late drama, and the Iowa Woo are going to hang on. They're going to punch their ticket to Arena Mania next week, a chance to play for the championship, with this being their second win of the entire season. What an upset. Losing three in a row to Kansas City during the regular season. You come into their house and pack them home. Unbelievable. Devastating loss here for the Goats, but Man, what a story for Iowa. Jubilation in Waterloo. Your score, Iowa 59, Kansas City 58. 